All right, guys, we have a ton of stuff to go over this morning, over uh, the information on the next two systems, but don't worry. I've got my coffee right here beside me. I'm ready to go. Not even eating breakfast right now because I want to get this video done uh, and uh, get you guys informed of what we're going to be looking at going forward. All right, what you have here was... Uh, the 18z yesterday's uh gsf model and i wanted to show you the difference uh over these next few runs that we had here uh this is for monday's storm and uh trying to find a common ground uh on where and who's going to get snow now this was what it was showing for yesterday uh, and then on the midnight run, you can see that uh, it on the first one it wasn't even showing a, a storm really. It had some upslope snow showers, but all of a sudden when you get into the midnight model, it was uh, showing a uh, storm coming up out of the south. Still didn't show a defined low on there. Uh, then you get into this morning's uh, run at uh, about 5 a.m. this morning you can see that it did bring in a low in place now like i said this is the gsf model uh but it still was only showing snow just on the northern tip up there showing it basically going out to sea which you see right here on the very next uh image there so like i said the most recent data from the gsf is showing it going straight out to sea and not really giving us anything but the reason why you can't agree with that is because of the ensembles and i'll show you what an ensemble is is when you take the gsf model and you run that same operational model that i was showing you there 21 times to see what your majority of your results are and you can see the majority is this scenario right here now i'm not saying that that's going to give you a but load of snow i'm just saying that it's much farther north when you run that model 21 times than when you look at the operational model so being it is that that is the scenario of the ensembles you have to throw away the the operational model that's been coming out every six hours is garbage but but like i said you can see that on those operation models though since yesterday it has been trending to actually show a system so I think in result for the GSF, you'll start seeing a more scenario like this as we get closer. Now let's go look into the German Icon model. This was yesterday evening, and you can see that it was showing a low uh, down in the south, not really bringing much snow up to the north. Then as you get into this morning's models, though, uh, the same model, the German Icon model, you can see that it brings it much further north. Let's look at that again. That was yesterday evening. This was this morning. And this uh, would be a, a Monday morning. And you can see there, though there's a lot of rain, some would be seeing frozen precipitation. Now, like I said, this is one model. Then if you go uh, another three hours out, you can see that more cold works into the back side of that. But when you look at these models, you have to look at a couple things. You have to look at trends. What are the models trending? What you know, are they moving north and moving east, west? You know, what are they trending? Uh and you gotta find a common ground because some models are gonna be way far north, some way far south. Some models handle different systems differently. So you have to find the common ground. The middle area the most likely area to see snow so let's go into the Canadian model now the Canadian model hasn't been hardly showing anything for this system it's been trying to show it on uh, more energy on the Wednesday Thursday system which I'm going to talk about here in a little bit uh, and not really giving much to that so you're like well there's not hardly nothing there you know sort of like the uh, GSF was kind of showing there yesterday but see that was uh yesterday's run and this was midnight and you can see a uh, a lot more defined 
storm system there here on the Canadian. So it's starting to see a little bit more energy on Monday system than what the Canadian had been showing. Now let's look at the Euro. The Euro yesterday was exploding this storm. I mean, like it was trying to say uh, uh, a foot or more of snow, you know, up through West Virginia and parts of Virginia. And I don't think it'll be that scenario either. Uh, now this was uh, the midnight run yesterday. And, and like I said, see, it was exploding with a lot of ice and snow on the northern edge. Now this is the uh, most current one. And uh, this is more logical. Still might not be as far north as, as what it should be. But uh, some snow on the northern edge would be more logical than it to go in a full-blown system like the euro was trying to say yesterday so like i said we have to find the common ground i think we're going to get some snow out of it in west virginia and parts of virginia and the high terrain of north carolina and the mountains but i don't know how much yet we have to work that out and the, going on to the next system which is the wednesday thursday time frame i think that's our best chance of frozen precipitation but right now anything is on the board it could be could be some rain freezing rain sleet snow right now it just looks like a mess but nevertheless it still looks like a better chance of getting an, uh, some accumulation than what monday's is uh, this here is the gsf run this morning and uh slide over here to the canadian the canadian uh starts out on wednesday morning about daylight you can see that pink area there showing a lot of mix and freezing rain and sleet mixed in there snow right to the northern edge there and uh with this canadian model you move on up to 162 hours which is uh wednesday afternoon still showing uh, some freezing rain and sleet in the two Virginias there and as you get into Pennsylvania it looks like it tries to uh, go into a powerful uh, snow system up up into Pennsylvania maybe even the northern panhandle of West Virginia and you go out to 168 hours which is overnight on Wednesday night and it's trying to say it's changing over back to all rain down here in West Virginia and most of Virginia and you know snowing pretty heavily in pennsylvania now let's look see what the icon model says now the interesting thing is about the icon model it hadn't been really showing anything for the wednesday thursday storm but as you can see here on the icon model for wednesday uh, afternoon evening time frame it shows uh more snow uh than than what that other one was showing for eastern west virginia and shenandoah valley virginia now, uh, slide over here to 165 hours, which is Wednesday afternoon, evening, a little bit further in. You can see it also sees some pretty heavy stuff in Pennsylvania and northern West Virginia. Uh, slide on out to 168 hours. Still blowing up Pennsylvania and up that way with some heavy snow showers, maybe even possibly uh, the panhandle of West Virginia go out to 177 hours which is thursday morning you still see some lingering showers down in west virginia and it's still trying to pound the northern part of the united states up to north new york so that's the interesting now as far as euro goes it also sees a mixed bag of precip so like i said we first have to get Monday system work out to see what we're going to get off of it. Where that rain snow line is going to be, where the common ground is on the models. And then we can figure out uh, what we're going to get on it. And then we can look at this next system, which is the Wednesday, Thursday time frame, which in my opinion looks like a better chance for some snow. But like I said, we have to keep continuing to watch these models. Uh, to see what their trends are and their common ground is going to be that's all i have for now as soon as i know more i'll let you guys know guys you have a good one